Ring of Fire. Let's talk about Ring of Fire. Uh, so I first heard this term Ring of Fire not that long ago. And my first thought went to the Ring of Fire in the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> okay. And this is um, a ring of underwater uh, volcanoes and fault lines that are in the Pacific Ocean and uh, are on the floor of the Pacific Ocean. And, uh, and that's where my mind went when I heard Ring of Fire. And then, uh, so I listened with some curiosity to a couple clips that were sent to me. And really what they're talking about, the Ring of Fire is referring to a total solar eclipse, which those of us have been around for a while, we've seen total solar eclipses. And that's when the moon is perfectly in the center of the sun. And there's a circle of light that's around that. And that circle of light, if you look directly at it, is so intense, it'll harm your eyes. And, uh, and then, you know, then you have your reflection apparatuses to see the eclipse with your naked eye. Uh, and there are certain areas of the country where this, where this is visible in the sky at the time that it happens. I'm told it's about a 120-mile um, uh, bandwidth uh, or width of, of, a, of visibility that goes across um, what, wherever it's going to go across. And in this case, it's going across the western part of the United States through Texas into the Yuc Yucatan Peninsula. And, uh, and it will keep going down through parts of, I think, South America. So <clears throat> someone asked me, is this really the most significant cosmic event of the entire year? <laughs> you know, and, uh, and I'm going to say yes. And there's a few reasons why. And it might be beyond just regular astrology. But, um, but we need to look at the themes here. If you guys, if when you think about this year, or the kinds of things that have been coming up for healing for you, um, what's been coming up? What are what are the pieces that been needing that's been um, beckoning for forgiveness? What what kinds of themes are your ancestors bringing to you? What sorts of uh, pieces, revelations have happened where um, where you've had a major epiphany? Uh oh, uh oh, sorry, I have to put this down for one second. I have the wind that's about to take my door. Hold on one second. <laughs> Okay, sorry about that. Uh, so, <clears throat> hello, hello. All right, so so let's go back and reflect on the year so far, what's been going on. Now, I have the benefit, I mean, I have my personal work that I've, of course, been doing, but I have, I have the benefit of working with many um, empath psychic intuitives from, from um, around the planet. Most of them right now are in the Western Hemisphere. But um, there was a significant time when we had a lot of uh, people in the eastern, southeastern hemisphere. So I had the benefit of seeing like a, a eagle's view of the kind of healing going on for, for the collective. And uh, the main themes were healing the split, the, the split between divine masculine and divine feminine, the... Um, the conflicts that happen between male female consciousness and there has been a lot a lot a lot of opportunities to heal our inner masculine wounding and this you can also speak about this archetypally now this year was really significant because we had um this healing happened and then we also had our nodes change our lunar nodes so lunar nodes what this is is that you know the the, the moon has an ecliptic and there's a north node and a south node we call them nodes but really in ancient teachings it's called the dragon's head and the dragon's tail now let's talk about dragons for a minute dragon consciousness now there's a lot of talk about dragons lately um, those of us, you know, we've been waking up to this for years and years and years. And I first encountered uh, deep teachings about dragons back in the early 2000s with one of the immortal masters that was in my life at the time. And she described dragons as um, keepers of all that the cosmic mother, all that the all that is, has to forget in order to experience individuation. Okay, so there's we talk about this great forgetting right and this is in nesting dolls there's many layers in nesting dolls and realities that this forgetting happens 
And in, in this case, it's forgetting our eternal, our unbreakable connection to creation. This is, this is, these are the jewels that the dragons um, guard. And as you learn to shift your frequency and ripen your consciousness for expansion, you are granted access to reclaiming some of these jewels from the sacred dragons. Now, this was many years ago, and I believe she started this work in the 80s with dragon consciousness. So it was pretty quite extraordinary that, um, that she was even at that point. But uh, <clears throat> so there's that level of dragon consciousness. But then as we go further and our minds ripen, our souls ripen to expand further into reclaiming our remembering, we start to realize that we inside of us are very... Um, uh, soul blueprint, so to speak, embodies certain levels of dragon consciousness, of, of cosmic creation consciousness. And this is closely, closely connected into the elemental realm, the cellular intelligence of the atomic intelligence within our bodies. Um, there's many people in light body that work with elemental beings. And, uh, and when you start going to working with the actual elements themselves, they are, the veil is very, very thin between elemental consciousness uh, and cosmic consciousness. They, they are pretty much, once you get in there, they're one and the same. So when you're working with the elements, the pure element, or if you're working with very, um, I'll just say advanced elemental consciousness, you are tapping into, you're getting um, reorganized inside yourself to work directly with cosmic consciousness. And this is how your inner dragon wakes up. And we have different nesting dolls of dragon consciousness because everything that we see in this matrix, in, in the natural world or whatever, everything we see is built on this baseline of cosmic creative force. Okay. So <clears throat> this, this is significant because there's many of us waking up to these levels and they're becoming active inside of ourselves. Therefore, they're becoming active within the, the um, energy lines of the planet. They're becoming active within the grid systems of the planet. And these cycles that we have going on, celestially, planetarily, uh, on a heliosphere level, on a galactic level and beyond, all these cycles are are moving and they uh, they offer opportunities. So the eclipse coming up this Saturday is offering an opportunity where there is a direct, I mean, without hindrances, without distortions, there is direct portal access to what some might call gnosis consciousness, know thyself consciousness. So you, it's an opportunity to claim and know who you are on a much deeper level, expanded level, deeper level, one and the same. And it's all through the flavor, the cycles of um, the, uh, the energies that are surrounding it. In this case, in the Western world, in the ego driver world, that kind of thing, it's Aries and Libra. Now, the eclipse that happened um, in April is now getting reactivated. So all those energies that we were working in April, guys, <laughs> okay, all those energies we were working in April, which was, um, you know, another eclipse in Aries. Uh, so the Aries Libra axis was getting activated. And, uh, and now Mars is coming around and hitting those same um, nodal points. So we have not just the energy from this eclipse, this cycle, this eclipse cycle, but it's carrying the momentum of the energy from April. Okay. So think about what we were working on in April. Try to, if you have a journal, it's a great, you know, go back and look at what your dreams were saying, what were, what was happening inside of you, what was happening in your outer world. This is really important because now that's getting fired up and that energy is getting all the insights, all the healing, everything that happened, all the beautiful forgiveness and pieces that happened during that time, all that momentum is going to assist you in accessing this gateway that's happening in, on Saturday, okay? Now, if 
you were um, perhaps in total chaos all this year and you weren't able to get to forgiveness and to heart opening into your deep feeling centers, it's going to, you know, it's going to compound with this particular eclipse. But if you, if you were working it and you were, you were doing your inner work and you were offering yourself and others forgiveness and you were saying, tr saying true you know, removing the blind spots to your truth and you're doing all this work, then that beautiful, lovely um, energy of grace, of harmony, of love, compassion, that's like a, a wave to assist you with doing, going even deeper during this eclipse. And this is all in the flavor of Aries and Libra. Okay. Now, Aries, as you guys know, is the god of war, right? Well, in the past has been told to be the god of war because this infiltration has been going on a long time. Um, but there's those of us, especially in the academy, we've been working with the energies of Aries and Mars a lot, a lot, a lot. And we're coming to this place where the consciousness of the planetary being of Mars is shifting its harmonic to be the holder of divine masculine, not the god of war. So there's this, there's this shift that's happening little by little, wave by wave of transforming the um, divine masculine expression to use its energy towards being in alignment in harmony with, um, with virtuous masculine frequencies, consciousness, rather than the warring consciousness. Now, these are cycles that are possible because we are bringing these to these pieces and, you know, all these energies are alive inside of us. We alchemize them inside of us and we begin to see the shift on the outside. And when we get together in groups and do this, it's even more powerful. So the nodes shift from Aries to Libra. And of course, this eclipse is also Aries and Libra. So this is so there's this building of energy 